Hey guys, it's Random Cat here, and we're going to be playing through more Steins Gate. I know it's been a little bit of time since we last played it, but yeah, hopefully it'll be just as fun as it was before. So, we were carrying the IBN 5100, so, but unfortunately I don't have a car to transfer it. In fact, I don't even have a license. Same goes for my assistant. Can't American start driving at 16? How come you don't have a license? Why don't Kulisu have a license? What? Something wrong with that? I spend all my time doing research. You're wasting your youth. I thought so too, until I met you. Now I realize I'm doing just fine. Touché. Um, no fighting, please. Lukaku is flustered again. Is she ever not flustered? Or he, I mean. You're a lifesaver, Lukaku. Thanks for, thank your father again for me. Luca's dad had already lect uh, lectured. What, what, about, what, am, what am I talking about? Uh, returned to the shrine office. Luca Co nods. Your father is a lovely man. Eh? Hey, hey. Luca Co and I freeze at my assistant's nonchalant words. My father is married. Adultery is bad. Huh? I see, assistant. So you like older men. Hey, wait, don't misunderstand, you two. That's not what I meant. I won't give up my father. Oh my god. Why does everybody misinterpret people from different countries? Please don't cry. I just meant I was jealous of how well you get along with your father, that's all. That could be taken out of context. Eh, uh, of course, I'm sorry for the weird misunderstanding, that was so rude of me. Don't cry, we resolved the misunderstanding, so it's all okay. But in the depth of your heart lies feelings for Luca's dad. Die. Christina turns away. I decide to leave it at that. Angering her any further could lead to violence. Lukaku. Lukaku, don't forget your Samidare practice swing with Samidare. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I'll do my best. Um, it's Kangaroo, don't forget it. I'm sorry. Hey, what kind of low-life teases a girl? I wouldn't know. Lukaku is a guy! I ignore Christina and lift up the box with the IBM 5100 inside. Mm, God's heavy. I can barely get it off the ground. I put it down for now. Now I know why Luca's dad was red in the face when he brought this thing in. Is it that heavy? Pathetic. It's only as big as a CRT monitor. Yeah, but old computers were heavy. Then why don't you try carrying it? Then you'll understand. Kurisu sighs, grabs both ends of the cardboard box and lifts. Oh. She strains with all her might, but gives up without lifting it even a centimeter. It really heavy. She blushes slightly, but still maintains her usual frown. My assistant seems to have a strong competitive spirit. This thing's got to weigh like 30 kilos. Maybe we should have borrowed a pushcart. Urushibara-san, is there one in the shrine? Um, there is one, but actually it's broken, I'm sorry. Oh. Is there some other place we could borrow? No, we don't need a pushcart. Then how are you going to bring it back? It takes about 10 minutes to walk to your rundown lab from here. Maybe too heavy for one person. 
But it's different story for two. You and I need to carry it together. Why else do you think I made you my assistant? So that's why. Well, if we can carry it together, we might be able to manage, but... But I refuse. Huh? I said no. I'm pretty sure you said, but I refuse. You kind of did. Shut up, I said no. But I refuse is a famous manga quote. Could Kurisu be an at channeler? The whole reason you made me a lab mem was to borrow my knowledge. From this, it is elementary to divide the f derive the following. I won't do physical labor. I see. Then I guess I have no choice. I'll do my best to carry it, but... I glance at Lukako. He twitches when he notices my look, then timidly raises his hands with tears in his eyes. Um, then I will... Eh? You're going to help? Will you be okay? Yes, I'll do my best. No, Lukako, I shouldn't make you help me. I can manage by myself. But we're friends, Okabe-san. I want to help you. No, 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 I'll do my best. I mean, I'll do it myself. I'll help you. Then, um, me too. Please go ahead. Eh? Eh? What? <laughs> Don't you know, Christina, this is what you call a Japanese gag. You sneaky. Thanks for the backup, Lukako. Now that that's settled, my assistant will help me carry the computer so you don't have to help. Thanks for the offer. Uh, okay, if that's how it is then. Now, assistant, since you volunteered, I won't let you refuse. Grab hold and heave! Fine. Kurisu and I lift up the cardboard box. The burden's considerably easier when distributed between two people. Why do we have to be face to face? We're positioned so that we're looking at each other. <coughs> so that we're looking at each other. But there's no other way to hold it, so what can you do? Let's just go. I start to walk out of the shrine. Hey, stop, stop, stop! I said stop! You're a noisy one. Don't walk forwards, then I have to walk backwards. Let's walk sideways. Whatever, get movie assistant. Hey, listen. Please just listen. I can't walk backwards. Of course you can, you're my assistant. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I can't. I'm asking you to go sideways. No, I'm telling you to go sideways. Sideways, I'm going to fall. It's dark by the time we get to the lap. It's normally less than a 15 minute walk, but since Kurisu kept begging to take breaks, it ended up taking twice as long. Ah, we finally made it. I'm exhausted. If you didn't complain so much about every little thing, we would have gotten here sooner. Right back at you. You stopped to take a break at least five times along the way. Mm. Well, I wouldn't be feeling well if I was carrying a heavy computer either. Are you okay? It just... Occasionally my right arm aches. And when it does... Dark, destructive impulses overcome my soul. Shut up! I'll tear the peripheral nerve out of that arm. Holy crap, there's something wrong with this girl. Well, there's something wrong with you two. Rip out my nerve? That's like something from last year's new gen incidents. What's that? I bet you it's a manga. Uh, the popular name of a string of bizarre serial murders that occurred in Shibuya one year ago. A total of 14 people died in seven incidents. 
The method of mur methods of murder were entirely unorthodox, which led to its cult popularity among the youth of Shibuya. The mass media dubbed the new generation madness. A 25-year-old man was arrested as the culprit, but passed away in Shibuya earthquake immediately afterwards. To this day, rumors remain on the internet that he was not the true culprit. Probably not. But it's pretend anyway. Okay, I'll shut up. Let's bring the IBN 5100 into the lab. The final barrier awaits. Jeez, imagine walking up the stairs with that heavy computer. We have to ascend this rickety building's narrow staircase. Shouldn't you get your friends to help? You're right. I checked the window, the lab's lights are on. Huh? Part-time warrior comes out of Bronze Tube Workshop with perfect timing. If it isn't Okabe Lintaro, what you got there? <laughs> hmm. You want to know? Then I'll tell you. Wait, if you're just going to stand and talk, shouldn't we put the box down first? Yeah, actually, wait, this will only take a second. Well, what is it? What if I told you it's an IBM 5100? No way, you found it? Wow, way to go, Okabe Nintendo! About how she's blushing all the time now. I wish she'd stop calling me by my full name. If she's going to do that, she should at least call me Hyo in Kyoma. Where was it? Uh, it's heavy. Kurisu starts giving in. I'm about at my limit too. <laughs> Let's put it down. Kurisu and I place it on the ground gently, so as to not damage the content. <sighs> so, where was it? Yanabayashi Jinja, which is a shrine. Yanabayashi Jinja? Yanabayashi Shrine? You mean like a Shinto Shrine? Yeah. Why was it there? Then suddenly Suzaha looks at Kurisu. Ah. She gasps, then approaches Kurisu until they're close enough to feel each other's breath. Yes. Makise Kurisu? Makise Kurisu? Yes. Hmm. For some reason, she stares at Kurisu with a fright frightful intensity. Kurisu narrows her eyes in opposition. What's going on here? I can't move a muscle. He is so thick with tension. What is it? Have I done something wrong? Hmm. Suzaha turns away and without looking back disappears into the bronze tube workshop. Who was that? Now Kurisu demands answers from me. She works part-time at that store. Why was she glaring at me? How should I know? Did you do something to make her angry? I've never seen her before in my life. How rude. Kurisu picked a fight with me the first time we met too, but that was a hallucination. So I don't say anything. I get Daru and Mayuri to come down and help us. And the four of us carry the IBN 5100 up. How do they fit? All four of them in that narrow. Good work, everyone, with this. We can fight. Who are you fighting? Seren. And the system that rules the world. If that one makes you happy... Happy? I do not desire happiness. Have you forgotten? I am an insane, mad or scientist. What I desire is chaos. The time machine exists to bring chaos to the world. Oh my god, his laugh is amazing though. Never mind happiness. You're like a junkie, hyper-secreting 
Beta endorphins. <gasps> Ocarin, I don't want you doing bad things, remember? Let me just fix the camera. It's not exactly straight for some reason. But wow, I can't believe you found one. You make the impossible look easy. That's why we love you. That's why we... I certainly don't admire him. Eh? 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 For a moment there is complete silence. It's all thanks to Mayushi. Mayuri, oblivious as always, puffs out her chest with pride. But I don't miss Kurisu's relief sigh. She keeps dropping manga quotes. Does this mean what I think it means? Without Mayushi's info, Okarin would still be lost on the streets of Akibila. Mayuri's right. She did well this time. <laughs> anyway, it's time for Mayushi to go home. What about you, Kurisu-chan? Want to go together? Thanks, but I'm going to stay here a little longer. Looks like Kurisu is interested in the IBN 5100 and CERN after all. That reminds me, I haven't filled her in yet. Okay, but you should go home before it gets too late. See you tonight. Oh my god. Mayuri waves her hand as she leaves. Now then, Daru, when do you think you can use the IBN 5100 to hack CERN? Hmm, well... Daru talks as he plugs the IBN 5100's power adapter into the wall. He turns the machine on and the power supply begins to make a turbulent noise. Wow, it actually turned on! Well... That is a bit of a surprise. This is a bit of an old busy. First, I need to learn how to use this thing. It looks like hooking it up is going to be a pain. It might take a while. I can't play with this thing and search for the server admin's ID at the same time. Alright. Prioritize the ID search. If possible, I'd like you to get the IBM 5100 ready to use this month, though. There's still 30 days left this month. It's not going to take that long. That's my super hacker. Well... Well, what? We got... Shining finger of course. Have you found any leads yet? Nothing at all on my end. It's been a lot. I've been to a lot of stores, but no... None of them had an IBM 5100 on display. Maybe I should have tried asking. <laughs> Oh my god, why? Anyway, let me know if you found anything, Mocha. Hey, hey, Okabe. Uh -huh. What? I look up, Kurisu is glaring at me. What did you just call me? I called you Okabe. Okabe. You called me Okabe? Take one step towards Kurisu. She takes a step back. Time out, time out. Daru tries to hold me back, but I shake him off and take a step closer. Kurisu doesn't step back this time. Without taking her eyes off me, she bites her lip hard and curls her hands into fists. Did you just call me Okabe? I did. Problem? Yes, I'm younger than you, but you insist on calling me by ridiculous names like Christina and Zombie, so I don't think I need to show you any respect by adding San and besides. That's not the problem! Huh? I am not Okabe, I am Hyoin Kyoma! How many times do I have to tell you, Christina? Huh? God, you're so full of yourself. From now on, call me Hyowin, not that or Kyoma. No. <laughs> oh my god. Kurisu snaps at me and turns away. Are those tears I see in her eyes? Are you crying? 
child. I'm not crying. It's not like I was scared of you for a second there or anything. And I definitely wasn't relieved when you started talking like an idiot again, okay? She stalks over to the window and stares outside. I see her wipe her eyes with the back of her hand. Seems like she was crying after all. Daru, why is my assistant crying? Because you're a rude piece of shit. Uh, she said so herself just now. All I did was correct her on my name. Maybe she only acts strong, but is actually weak on the inside. That would be pretty moe. Well, <clears throat> I think she's pretty fearful often. Well, whatever. Back to checking mail. <clears throat> but I'm thirsty from this hard day's work. So before that, I take a fresh Dr. Pepper out of the fridge. Hey, aren't you going to tell me what's going on? I toss the bottle to Kurisu once she turns around. <clears throat> yeah, Kurisu tries to catch it but fails magnificently. She picks the bottle up off the floor then shoots me a glare. I'll explain in a second. Drink that while you wait. Hmm? Gee, thanks. I need to send a reply to Shining Finger. She ended up being no help at all, but I suppose I can't just say nothing. Really don't want to send her it. I got the goods. Over. I send as concise a message as possible. Now then, I... He's such an idiot. Why does he tell everybody everything? But the reply comes before I can open my mouth. The goods you found an IBN 5100. Gimme. Gimme? What nonsense is this? Sorry, but I'm not the owner. I can't just give it to you. I send that. Oh my god. Another instant reply. Let me borrow it. It's easy to imagine what will happen if I lend it to her. She'll disappear and I'll never see the IBN 5100 again. Why did you tell her, you friggin' idiot? No borrowing either. You can visit our lab if you want to see it, but no touching. The... Oh my... Are you... Are you stupid? Oh my god, I'll cover. He just told her where he lives. Or at least where his lab is. Add the lab address and send it. No more replies come. Sorry for the wait, Christina. I look up and see Kurisu drinking the Dr. P. Oh, you're a fan of the doc, I see. I lived seven years at its birthplace, after all. No, I cannot stand Dr. Pepper. Excellent. We'll make... Great drinking buddies. I'm a minor. That's not what I meant. I meant Dr. P drinking buddies. Is that all you drink? Kurisu shrugs her shoulders and takes another swig, signaling me to talk. So I explain how Daru and I hacked into CERN. And how they've already had the LHC in operation for nine years. And how they've successfully created mini black holes. And how it looks like they're researching time travel. And also, how they haven't disclosed any of that to the world. Kurisu's expression grows more and more intense as she listens to the story. CERN suddenly is acting strange, but how's the IBN 5100 involved? CERN's database uses an IBN 5100. So... The only way to decrypt that database is to use an IBN 5100 of our own. How do you know that? I have my sources. I don't drop Tata's name. I have no doubt this genius girl would laugh if I did. Kurisu puts a finger to her lips, deep in thought. Setting the IBN 5100 and such aside, I want to see proof that CERN's really doing that sort of research. True. We didn't get any definite proof of CERN's time travel research last time we hacked them. Daru, will it take much longer to find the server admin's account? 
Actually, I was just thinking about doing that. It shouldn't take more than half a day, I guess. There you go. I'll wait until then. You wait? It's already getting dark. Why not go home for tonight and come back tomorrow morning? No thanks. I'll wait. I want to know as soon as possible, even if it's just a microsecond sooner. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. You were already fascinated by the conspiracy. You can't help but want to know what lies at the heart of CERN. If what you guys are saying is true, then this isn't something to joke about. CERN is the world's top research institution. They're doing secret experiments without publishing their results. They're making fools of scientists the world over. That's only if it's true, though. She finishes by emphasizing that point again. Doesn't look like she believes us. Anyway, Daru, I'll leave it to you. According to Daru's research, the IBM 5100 weighs 25 kilos. For now, we'll leave it on the shelf in the development room. We carry the cardboard box to the room, half drag it. Kurisu follows. Can you show me the phone wave? Indeed, I can. Want to experiment? You haven't been able to send another email to the past yet, right? Do you know why? I can only shake my head. Let's run some tests. Kurisu looks around the development room. Man, you have a ton of junk. It's not junk. Since you knew the future gadgets laboratory, I'll explain. These are the glorious fruits of our science. The future gadgets. Future gadgets 1 to 7 are stored here. The phone wave with which you are already familiar is gadget number 8. Future gadgets, huh? Kurisu casually picks up future gadget 4. Mode snake up from the shelf and stares at it. Hey, isn't this a weapon? Future weapon number four, mode snake, designed after a claymore landmine, is an instant humidifier. How confusing. Insert water and turn the power on, and in mere seconds, generates a thick cloud of steam. So it's junk, I thought so. Could he see size and returns mode snake to the shelf? I'm borrowing this. Without waiting for a reply, she grabs Dadu's never worn lab coat from the shelf and puts it on gallantly. Whoa! It's just not right without a lab coat. Overcome with emotions, I seize Kurisu's hand and grasp it firmly. Hey. Assistant, you get it, don't you? Get what? Let go. If you're gonna do science, you need a lab coat, right? I told Dadu, Dadu over and over again, but he wouldn't wear one. But my assistant is different. She put it on before I even said anything. I knew you were meant for this, Christina. You're the best assistant a man, a man or scientist could ask for. I don't know if that's supposed to be a compliment, but it's coming off as an insult. Now, let go. And then she pushes me away. She, she shakes off my hand and turns her back to me. I'm giving you that lab coat to commemorate your joining the lab. Don't worry, it's never been worn. Or maybe this fateful encounter between you and that lab coat was decided by destiny long ago. Daru not wearing it was just another inevitability. This is the choice of Steins. Shut up. So we can start the experiment. Mm. Kurisu thrusts both hands into her lab coat pocket and then bends down to look at the time machine now placed underneath the table. The previous experiment broke the table and even left a hole in the floor. There's a danger that will happen again if we successfully reproduce the discharge phenomena, so unfortunately we'll have to leave it on the floor for now. So you haven't tampered with the microwave at all? <clears throat> I pointed to the X68000 there's um there's codes on the screen. 
It's in terminal mode right now. We can change the factory settings like this. Make the microwave do things its manufacturer never intended. How was it set when the discharge phenom a discharge discharge phenomena occurred? And nothing out of the ordinary. It was at factory settings. Hmm. I'll take a banana. A bunch of bananas only has three bananas left. Those are my Yuri's. Oh, so I don't need your permission then? I'll go buy new bananas tomorrow. <clears throat> Kurisu takes one banana from the bunch, squats down, and places it inside the phone wave name subject to change. She begins to type on her phone. She pushes send and the phone wave name subject to change begins to turn backwards. After 120 seconds, the chime rings. Nothing happened. The banana is still in the microwave, unjellified. Ow. Kurisu yelps as she tries to take out the banana and quickly draws back her hand. She starts blowing on her fingers. It's hot. Meaning the microwaves functioned normally. This proves that the hidden function Mayuri found wasn't well the freezing function, but we knew that already. <clears throat> Undaunted, Kurisu throws in a new banana and once again begins reverse rotation for 120 seconds. But the second banana warms up too. We can't reproduce the jellification phenomenon, uh, much less send mail to the past. What does this mean? I guess what happened earlier was an irregularity after all. I don't know if it's a regularity or not, but we ought to investigate the cause. I agree. We agree for once. But Kurisu's motivations and my mo um, motivation. Motives and my motives are probably the exact opposite. My assistant here wants to disprove my theory that the phone wave name subject to change is in fact a time machine. In the previous experiment, after spending 120 seconds in the phone wave name subject to change, the banana teleported back to the bunch jellified. We should consider that it returned to its state 120 seconds before. Wrong. If it returned to its state 120 seconds before, it wouldn't be jellified. So she wants to say that because it was jellified, it didn't travel back in time. The chicken returned to its frozen state without jellifying. That logic is dubious. Sure, it ended up frozen. But did you examine the possibility that it might have jellified first? No, I didn't. I think Mayuri ate the refrozen chicken. Salt didn't jellify. You mean nothing changed? After the discharge phenomena occurred last time, I spent all night experimenting with cabbage, radishes, rice, cognac, melon bread, crunchy kun, and cup ramen. What the hell is crunchy kun? A brand of popsicle, oh, popular, th it's fictional though. Popular throughout Japan, in addition to the standard soda flavor. Oh, it's like a, yeah. I know it's sort of ice, um, popsicle they're trying to imitate. I don't remember its name. But it's the one, <coughs> as it says there, you can win a free icy pole if you get the right thing on the thing. Same thing with liquids. On that day, our success rate took a 180 degree turn. Before the discharge phenomena, everything succeeded. After the discharge phenomena, everything failed. Is the microwave storing electricity? He said that jellified objects become fractal structured, right? <clears throat> Salt has a simple structure by nature, so maybe that had an effect. But how could electricity be related? Here, we should think under the assumption of time travel theory. No, it's not good to start thinking from that conclusion. We've already had several successful experiments. You can't deny that. I'm not especially concerned whether this thing is, this, is a time machine or not. 
To begin with, it's physically impossible for this tiny little microbe to reproduce energy equivalent to the Big Bang. Kurisu frowns deeply. We can't reproduce the discharge phenomena, nor the fractalization. There should be a reason why. We haven't changed our methods, we haven't changed the settings, we haven't changed the experimental subject subjects either. There must be some other variable. Maybe it's the one who observes it. What do you mean by that? Quantum theory. The observer is an important element to the experiment. There were four of us when here when the discharge phenomena occurred last time, but before that it occurred when Hashida-san was alone. Each time fractalization occurred, there were either two or three people observing. You and I each saw both phenomena. In other words, the conditions haven't changed. In that case, hmm, there must be some other variable. It's on the tip of my tongue. Then I hear a rumbling sound from Kurisu's stomach. Hmm. She's definitely hungry. Shut up, I haven't eaten anything since lunch. Kurisu turns away as she looks at her watch. It's already eight. Just eat a banana, but only one of the two we just warmed. There are, after all, the fruits of our experiment. <coughs> or you could take somebody from our stock of cup ramens. Don't want any? Well, since you have lived in America for so long, I guess you'd prefer fast food instead. Cup noodles? What? I'll have cup noodles. Cup ramen? What flavors? There's soy sauce flavor and chicken flavor. Chicken. <coughs> she seemed in the mood to eat. Well, so do you have a fork? It's past midnight. Um, guys, I might leave it as that for now, because as you can probably hear, I've got a bit of a sore throat, as I have for quite some weeks now. Um, I'm going to leave it here, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.